Okay, so now we have these three data tables loaded independently and we can check that by clicking on the edit menu and going down to data table properties. So we see these three tables, budget data, forecast data, and offshore prod data. I'm going to rename this table from offshore prod data to production data. That way we have consistent naming conventions across all three tables. So now that we have these three tables, we can start using them in visualizations. And although Spotfire does allow you to combine multiple data tables in one visualization, it'll make life a lot easier for us if we combine these three tables into one single table. So in this video, I'll show you how to combine multiple data tables into one table. We don't want to modify any of these three tables. So what we'll do is insert a new table by clicking the Add Data Table button. And instead of connecting to an external source or adding another file, what we're gonna do is add a data table from the existing analysis. So we'll scroll down to where it says from current analysis. And it doesn't matter which one you pick because we're gonna use all three of these. So we'll start with budget data. So at this point, all we're doing is basically making a copy of the budget data table. So I'm gonna rename this combination table because in the next step, we're going to be adding rows from the other data tables into this combination table. We'll click OK. So this brings up a new page with a new table, and we can see that this is the combination table. And if you look, go back and look at the budget data table, you can see that they're identical. They both have 33,603 rows and 12 columns. So this new combination table already has rows from the budget data so now we need to insert rows from the production data tables and the forecast data tables. So we'll do that by clicking insert, rows, and we're going to add rows to the data table combination table, and we're going to add rows from the forecast table. So click the drop down next to select, scroll down to where it says from current analysis, and select the next one on the list, which is forecast data. After selecting the forecast data table, we click Next, and now we get to match up the columns from the current data table, which is the combination table, with the new data table, which is the forecast data. So we're going to try to match all possible, and it matches all of them except for the production date. And the reason why is that these are slightly different formats. This is a date time, and this is a date. But we can manually match these, and it's okay. So now we click Next. So the last step is probably the most important step. So to this point, we've made a copy of the budget table and are starting to insert rows from the forecast table. But it's important that we know where these rows came from. At the moment, there's no way to identify which rows came from the budget table and which rows came from the forecast table. So what we can do is use this feature to identify origin of new rows and we'll create a new column. So this is gonna add a new column in our combination table and we're gonna call this source. This is telling us which table the rows were inserted from. So I think it makes more sense to first identify the value of the original rows. The current rows in the combination table are from the budget table, so we're going to call this budget. And the new rows are from the forecast table, so we're going to call this forecast. So after we insert these new rows, I'll show you the new column that we just created. Before we click finish, let's look at the number of rows. We have 33,603 rows in the combination table and we expect to be adding to that number since we're inserting new rows from the forecast table. Click finish and we can see that we went from 33,000 to 67,000. So I mentioned that we inserted that new column to identify the source of the rows but we don't see that column in here and the reason why is that we have to add it manually. So we can go into the properties by right clicking anywhere in this table and select properties and go down to the fourth or fifth one that's called columns so we see that all of these selected columns are already in the data table, but this new column source, which we just created, we need to add that over. So I just click add and close this and we can scroll over and we see the source. So if we quickly scroll down this table, we can see that a lot of these rows came from budget and then a lot of these rows came from the forecast. So that's great, we're two thirds of the way there. Now we need to add the rows from the production data table. So we'll follow the same steps by clicking insert, rows, and we're going to add rows to the combination table 
and we're going to add rows from the production data table. So check that, click next. The first thing we want to do is see if we can match all of these. So we'll click match all possible and we'll scroll down in the new data and see if any of them didn't match. So the ones that are matched are grayed out and if we scroll down, oh we see that there are a few that didn't get matched. So let's think about why these didn't get matched. Well this prod data string is a column that exists in the production data table but not in the current data. We don't really care about bringing that one into the combo table so we'll leave it out. So the first one is called prod date real. It's just representing the date as a real number. We don't care about this one right now, so we can ignore it. But the next one, prod date, this is a date column. So this is the one that we do care about. And for some reason it didn't match it up with the production date from the current data. And the reason why it didn't match it up correctly is because the columns are named differently. But all we have to do is highlight this row in each one of these boxes and manually match selected. So we also notice in the current data table, that BOEPD is not being matched with anything in the new data table. And the reason why is that the BOEPD column from the current data table, which is the budget and the forecast, doesn't exist in the production data table. We have oil and gas, but we don't have the equivalent. So what we need to do before we proceed is insert a calculated column that combines oil and gas to the equivalent BOE. So we'll cancel out of this and in the next video, I'll insert a calculated column for barrels of oil equivalent into the production table so that we can match that with the existing BOEPD column in the combination table.